What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So now that we're into 2021, the big question, as it seems to be every single year in January is, when is the next Nintendo Direct? Well, people have now started to spot that Nintendo's Direct website, where they have all of the Directs listed, has been continuously updated, it seems, over the last couple of days, almost preparing for some event coming up in the next couple of weeks. We'll talk about that one uh, here today. Also, we're gonna talk about Sony and some of their own release schedules, as it looks like they posted some up around CES when Jim Ryan took the stage there to tell us how great the PlayStation 5 did, but now we have at least some months and years to put next to some of the games coming up. And we're also gonna talk about Cyberpunk 2077 because uh, it's under investigation again. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Xbox and another controller. Now, last generation, there were a lot of Xbox controllers to go with their systems, the One S or the One X or any of that. I mean, there were a lot to choose from. And right now we have a black Xbox controller, a white controller, and then we have that shock blue controller. Well, now it looks like we have another entry in their controller lineup, and you can see it here. This from the Microsoft website saying, you can pick up the Xbox wireless controller in pulse red for player two, or add this beauty to your own personal collection for $64.99 USD starting February 9th in most Xbox markets and starting tomorrow in China. Check your local retailer for availability. You know what? I think it looks pretty good. It's got like the red, the black, and then it does have the white backing. It kind of contrasts pretty well, I would say, but it's not purple. Like they were this close with the blue controller, which also looks pretty good. I think the red one looks better than the blue controller right now. And I don't really need another controller, but look, I get it. A lot of people like to collect these different colored controllers, so it is cool to see that. It's kind of like with the Joy-Cons, a lot of people like to collect all of those ones. Just another one here, and if you're a big fan of red, well, there's your controller. Also, we had several trademarks being filed by Square. These ones seemingly around the new Final Fantasy VII Remake universe. If we go over to Gamatsu here, they listed a couple of them, which includes Ever Crisis, The First Soldier, and the Shinra Electric Power Company. Now, Ever Crisis is interesting because as pointed out by Gamatsu, it would be related related to Before Crisis. That was the mobile game. That was back in 2004. And then we also had in 2007, the PSP game, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. And I would like to think that this has something to do with either of those games because it would be nice just to get more about Zack. And maybe that's what this is. Without spoiling Final Fantasy VII Remake, they could uh, have multiple sequels, we'll say, to the game, which is interesting to think about there. But the other uh, thing is people are bringing up, what if it's just another cell phone? You have another mobile game, like kind of like Before Crisis. Uh, that's the one I'm hopeful they have bigger plans for. And you know what? They gotta get Crisis Core moved up to current platforms. I mean, you gotta, you have to do that. Come on, Square. Don't sit on Crisis Core with the PSP forever. And then we have uh, First Soldier with Sephiroth. The Shinra Electric Company, that could just be for merchandising for the logo and all of that. Uh, but the First Soldier is interesting because that, that would make a pretty good title for a game if it it's a game about Sephiroth. Can you can can you play as Sephiroth? Because that that seems like a tough game to make, considering you would just I don't know just go around destroying everything. I mean, who's gonna stop you really? But it, that would be a cool one to see happen too. And they've done this before with Final Fantasy VII. A lot of different spin-off titles. Think of like Dirge of Cerberus, right? So a lot of a lot of interesting things happening here. And I mean, you could even have the first soldier as like maybe a movie. Maybe they do something again like they did with Advent Children. So. A lot of possibilities here. Oh, and we of course had that Mass Effect Legendary Edition announced a bit ago, but now it looks like we may be seeing the release date posted up online by online retailers. This from Eurogamer here saying, Singapore retailer Shopatree and Indonesian outlet GS Shop both have Mass Effect Legendary Edition down for March 12th. This is spotted by Twitter user Idle Sloth. And my the biggest thing here is sure, March 12th, that, I mean, sure, that, that could be it. That makes some sense there, but I'm curious how much work they put into this remaster. Is it really gonna be them just taking the first, like just the three Mass Effect games, you leave Andromeda you know, behind, and no big deal there. But if you take the first three and you move them up, do they do extra work, some quality of life stuff to like the first Mass Effect? Do they alter the gameplay, maybe update it a bit? Because look, I liked the game back then, but it has not aged like that well. So maybe they do that or who knows, maybe they just move it over completely and it's just as you remember it. But we'll see March 12th, however, again, sounds pretty good to me, not too far off either. And guys, that's some of the quick news out of the way. Let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this Nintendo Direct speculation and exactly where it's coming from. So 
Over on Reddit, people started to notice that the Nintendo website for these directs, where they kind of list them all out and you can click them and get more information, we're starting to see consistent updates. Almost like every other day, something was being updated with the website, which you can see here. And the way they were finding this is if you take the URL and you punch it into Visio Spark, it's able to monitor when other websites were last updated. Here's the issue with this, all right? And this is why I don't think it's necessarily like, oh, it's absolutely happening, anything really is because they could have seriously changed like a piece of HTML. Maybe they were trying to optimize or resize something or anything like that. It would tell you that it updated. Like they could absolutely be doing some things in the background to get ready for an event coming up so that when it does happen, they hit a button and it goes live on that page. But I don't think this is necessarily definitive proof that there is a direct in January. And really, if you look back at the history, like in the last couple of years, we had a mini, I believe that was uh, that was in 2018. I believe 2019, we didn't have anything in January. 2020, we had a Pokemon direct. They don't really do a lot of things in January, at least not recently. But we do have something to look forward to about an hour after this video goes up. You can see this tweet here from Nintendo. Bowser's Fury will be unleashed in a new Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury trailer tomorrow. Come back at 6 a.m. Pacific to see the two minute long trailer. That will be yeah about an hour from right now when this video goes live. It sounds like two minutes would be enough to maybe talk about what Bowser's Fury exactly is and it seems weird to have a build up to a two minute trailer that you're just gonna drop on YouTube. Why don't you just drop the trailer? I, I don't I don't really understand that. I mean, I'm sure this is going to really talk about the, I guess the significant part of this game that everyone's wondering about, which is Bowser's Fury. But there's also the question of the online multiplayer. Is this, is it just gonna be legit multiplayer? Like we can play through the whole game together. It's gonna be challenges set up. A lot of questions still around that aspect, but they have a full website that might just get completely updated today as well when this two minute trailer goes live again. A strange thing to build up to when they could just release a two minute trailer without saying much. And to me, that's one of the biggest reasons I don't necessarily think there will be a full on Nintendo Direct or a mini even, or even a partner showcase because this is the game that I thought they would have wanted to go over in its own Direct and it only gets about two minutes. That's something they could have easily tacked on to a mini or, or a full direct or something. No, it's just kind of off on its own. And remember that's coming out next month. So the thing that I think they could do in January, it's very possible, is Pokemon because they would want to get everything set up nice and neat for their 25th anniversary. And it sounds like they have quite a bit of stuff to go over. So if anything, my money would be on a Pokemon direct of some kind. And yes, that would be updated on that site that's seen continuous updates over the last week or so. So interesting things there. And uh, hey, I guess in about an hour from when this video goes live, we'll see what Bowser's Fury is all about. Next up, let's talk about Sony and 2021. It's been kind of a slow start for next generation in 2021 right now. Anyway, Sony has Returnal coming up in March, but otherwise, we don't really know what else is coming up, at least with an idea of when it's coming out. We think there are gonna be quite a few games in the back half of 2021, but at CES, Jim Ryan showed up. There were a lot of people that were hopeful that, hey, maybe they'll announce something cool here for the PlayStation 5. Instead, he just kind of showed up and said, it was the biggest launch ever for PlayStation, the PS5. That wasn't new, by the way, we already knew that. So he didn't really tell us anything at all. They were just there just to be there, just to have the PlayStation logo up with an audience naturally at CES that would see it. However, it did appear that alongside of this, we had several windows and years put onto some of these games. It wasn't like this small print too. People had to like zoom in and kind of type it out just to make sure they had everything right. But we can go over here to PSU.com that did list all of these. We can see Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart set for 2021, Horizon Forbidden West 2021, Returnal March 19th, 2021. Then we have Pragmata, that's 2023, Solar Ash June 2021, Kenna Bridge of Spirits, which by the way, that's flying under the radar right now. Kenna looks very good. That is a very good looking game right now. March 2021. Stray October 2021. Ghostwire Tokyo October 2021. Little Devil Inside July 2021. Project Athea. That's January 2022. Interesting that that would come out in January. Uh, however, a year from now, uh, that's the one out of all of these that I would see probably getting pushed out of its uh, release window here. And then Hitman 3, naturally that, that's out in what, eight days now, January 20th, 2021. Now there are a few games missing here that I noticed. Final Fantasy 16 is not in there. Gran Turismo is not in there. But God of War, remember they announced God of War and there were a lot of people thinking, oh wow, this is gonna come out 2021. 
Is it gonna be on the PS4? That's the big question a lot of people have now too, right? Is it gonna be PS5 and PS4? I mean, it's, it's very possible, but like, we're not seeing it here. That You feel like that would be one they would wanna heavily push next to something like Gran Turismo, which Gran Turismo, I, I could actually see that kind of getting delayed the way it, it goes down with Polyphony where they take a lot of time to get these games done with Gran Turismo. So we'll see with that one. And I feel like they'd wanna put that next to the PlayStation VR 2. Anyway, God of War not being on this list is interesting, but like the big one here, Ratchet & Clank, I mean, we expect that to be out next, right? All right, Returnal's coming out in March. Great, we'll get there, we'll, we'll check that game out. But like after that, you feel like it's Ratchet & Clank, but they're still not putting a date on it. So interesting stuff there. And like I said, Project Athea, that'll probably fall out of January. I don't know why you would release a bigger game like that in, in uh, like the first month of the year, but a lot of interesting released windows and months here, but Ratchet & Clank, I'm hoping is the next one that gets a solid date. And hopefully that's before Returnal comes out. So maybe a state of play coming up in the next month or two. We'll see about that. Next up, let's talk about how Cyberpunk 2077 is once again, under investigation. Go figure, is it even surprising anymore? Let's go over to gameindustry.biz where we can see this here. Cyberpunk 2077 developer C Project Red is being investigated by Poland's Office of Competition and Consumer Protection. That being the UOKIK. This statement here from one of their spokespersons saying, we will check how the manufacturer is working on the introduction of amendments or solution to difficulties preventing the game to work on different consoles, but also how it intends to act in relation to the persons who filed complaints and are dissatisfied with their purchase due to the inability to play games on owned equipment despite previous assurances that it would. Now the newspaper here also provided an analysis from an attorney who explained that despite CD Projekt Red's best efforts to fix the issues with Cyberpunk 2077, this might not be enough to prevent it from being accused of unfair market practice. And if CD Projekt is found to have been misleading to consumers by the Office of Consumer Protections there in Poland, apparently the consequence could be up to 10% of their overall annual income and them just imposing refunds. Like, hey, you have to refund these people the money for this game because you misled them for it. And that's where we are now with, with Cyberpunk 2077. In, in Poland, you have the Office of Com Consumer Protections getting involved due to just the number of overall complaints with the situation they felt the need to look into it. The thing here though is, it, to me, it, it seems anyway, the CD Projekt has a lot of motivation to make sure this game runs on the base PlayStation 4 and even that Xbox One VCR. And that's going to be interesting to see evolve over time because we're already seeing patch comparisons. So I'm sure we'll see comparisons from the very first version of the game that was released to a patch that comes out probably later on this year. I am curious how long it will take them to fix it because that to me seems like their big focus now since that's what a lot of this is focusing on is just the overall performance of last generation hardware. So me thinking about next gen systems and when is that patch gonna come out for the PS5 and the Series X, I think that's gonna be a little while. Like we might be talking about the, the next launch of Cyberpunk for like a holiday thing. And I think they are gonna try to do that launch it again, this time with PS5 box art and the Xbox Series X box art, even though that's the same as the Xbox One, but you get my picture. They'll probably try to launch it all over again after they get these games cleaned up. So that'll be really the release date they should have done in the first place. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Arcade 1UP at CES because they showed up with a ton of new arcade cabinets, one of which, I really like and I think I'm gonna pick it up because it looks awesome. But let's go over here to Wario64 where he just started tweeting out left and right as information was being made available at CES. And we can start here. We had an X-Men cabinet, Dragon's Lair cabinet, Tari Legacy Edition, Arcade 1UP cabinet. But the X-Men cabinet includes Captain America and the Avengers uh, and the Avengers in Galactic Storm. Dragon's Lair has Dragon's Lair 1, 2, and Space Ace. And then we have Capcom Legacy Edition arcade cabinet. That is Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, World Warrior, a Dark Stalker, Strider, Commando, Final Fight, Ghosts and Goblins, 1944. Then we have Bandai Namco that has a bunch of the Pac-Man titles, Mappy and a few others, but the big one, the one that I saw and I was like, I, I mean, I have to get that, is Killer Instinct. Look at this cabinet, it looks amazing. And if we go over to Arcade 1UP's website describing this cabinet, they say Killer Instinct fans loved it, critics loved it, for many retro gamer enthusiasts, it's a definitive title of the mid 90s with the gameplay, soundtrack, and 3D render graphics all revered. Rel relive that video game era with this Stop You In Your Tracks arcade cabinet that also includes Killer Instinct 2, 
Battletoads, yes, the arcade version, and Battletoads Double Dragon as a bonus game. That is incredible. And they also say here, the live Wi-Fi feature allows you to take on opponents anywhere playing from their own cabinet. That's right. If you have your cabinet at home, you connect it to Wi-Fi, you can play someone else with their cabinet, you know, over the internet. That is a cool idea. I'm glad they did implement that into some of their cabinets. It seems like it would be a cool thing to have here with Killer Instinct, but the cabinet itself looks incredible. I love the selection of games here. Even throwing in Battletoads Double Dragon is a nice touch. And yeah, this is the one right here. I know the X-Men one's really, really cool to see that with the four player kind of X-Men action there, but like Killer Instinct, it, it just looks so good. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Nita Map saying, Hey John, I know this isn't video game related news technically, but are you going to mention the Game Explained drama? I heard it was briefly mentioned in a spawn cast, but it would be interesting to see you mention it in a news wave. You have worked with Game Explained a lot, so I wonder if you have any thoughts on the topic. I actually have I haven't worked with Game Explain that much. I think I did a discussion with uh, on their channel with John and Nate, and that was around the Xbox event when that was coming up. That was before we saw Fable announced, and we talked about predictions and, and things like that. All I really can see is what a lot of you see on Reddit, and I'm not a, like a drama channel or really get into any of that, so it, it doesn't really fit like on the channel here, but I saw a lot of you asking in the comments and all I could say is from the outside, because that's how I see it like a lot of you do, it's not a great look, obviously. Uh, I have talked with uh, some of the people who have left Game Explained, like John, uh, we, again, had him on for a predictions video for Nintendo 2021 with Ant Dude and Scott. Uh, and he said he's pretty happy with his new job. So that's good there. Actually, I was on uh, Good Vibes Gaming. You might see that today. So go check that one out and everyone there, Seem pretty happy with their new gig there with the channel and that's doing well. So at least from what I'm seeing, everyone who left and realized their worth, they are all pretty happy. So at least at the end of it, that's good, right? And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Well, there's a Nintendo Direct. Nintendo hasn't really done a lot of them in January, but do you think they're gonna do something a bit different? Maybe surprise us, because you can never really predict Nintendo, right? Maybe they just say, you know what? Drop the full Direct in a week or two, and we'll catch everyone off guard doing it in January. Let me know about that one. And then also, what do you think about the arcade one-up cabinet, specifically that Killer Instinct one, I think it looks really good. And then what is the next game from Sony that's going to come out after Returnal? My money is on Ratchet and Clank, but they had a lot of 2021 years in there with no months on some of these games. So let me know about that. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.